Hello, it's Randy from Voices and welcome back to another video. It's so good to see you here. Today, we're gonna to be going over GarageBand for voiceover. A question that we get asked all the time is, which digital audio workstation, or DAW as we call it, should I be using for voiceover? And of course, you know, as you start to pay more money for different softwares, you can get into some really high-end features, uh, things like noise removal and uh, really good editing tools. But when you're starting out, it's important to start out with as little cost as possible. But there actually are some free DAWs out there like GarageBand and Audacity, which have just about every tool that you need to get started to book your first job. And then of course, once you're starting to book some jobs, you can reinvest that money back into your career to get the tools that you need. All right, so this is the loading screen that you'll see when you open up GarageBand. Uh, now we're in this first default section here where you can create a project. And a project is basically a house for all of your audio files and audio edits for one specific project. So every time you get a new job, you'd probably want to create a new project and name it accordingly. Now, one place where people tend to go wrong is by clicking on project templates and clicking this voice option. Oh, I just did it. Whoops. This is a good example, though. I can show you. You can actually see that they've created these different vocal effects. There's like a robot voice, fuzz vocal, bright vocal, all these things that we just don't need. And they all have processing on them. And of course, we want to be able to control our own projects, not have these predetermined effects and stuff like that. So I'd recommend not using any of these project templates. Instead, we want to go to new project and create a blank plain project. Then we can open up the details here and you'll see that there's some musical information. We don't need to worry about that right now because we're going to be deleting all of the musical information. We just want to double check that the input device and output device are set up to our microphone. So if you have a USB microphone, this will show up there. It'll say like, you know, Rode USB, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, in this case, I'm using the Scarlett 4i4 by Focusrite, which is set up over there. I can see it. It's plugged in. We're good to go. So I'll go ahead and click choose for that. Now, welcome to the inside of GarageBand. So the first thing it's gonna ask you is to choose a track type. Now, depending on which track type we choose, will determine how we're getting signals into our software. So if we choose software instrument, GarageBand is gonna be set up to look for like a keyboard or a digital drum set or some sort of USB instrument, basically. We're gonna go, go ahead and choose audio. And I wanna select input four which I know is this microphone right here. For you, it's probably gonna be input one. It's just the way that we have our studio configured here. And you wanna select the box that says, I want to hear my instrument as I play and record. This is really important. It does what's called low latency monitoring. And this basically means that you'll be able to hear what's happening in your microphone, in your headset without any sort of delay or anything like that. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. And we'll go ahead and click create. Now you can see right here, there's sound coming in already. It's already seeing this microphone. If I scratch it, you'll see. All right, so it's already coming in. That's great. Uh, we know everything is getting in there, but there's a lot of information here that we just don't need yet. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit more streamlined for voiceover. So when you open up a new session, there's a few key commands that I want you to remember, and it's Y, E, K, Shift, K. Y, E, K, Shift, K. Now I'll show you what I just did. Mm -hmm. What I was doing is hiding the library with Y. I was hiding the effects with E, E for effects. I was turning off this metronome with K and I was turning off the count in, which will basically count in your recording with Shift K. We just don't need those. Those are musical things that we just don't need. Now, the last thing you wanna change before we start digging in here is up at the top here, you can see this is set up for project parameters. And right now it's set up to bars, beats, tempo, uh, time signature, and key signature. None of this we need. We just need time. That's really the only parameter that we need to see. So let's go ahead and change this to time. And you'll notice it just changed this from bars to beats to time and this as well. We have two different audio editors here. And if I play, you can see both timelines move in, in harmony here. What we can do with this, because we have all this screen real estate to use up, is we can make one of these very detailed and one of them very uh, sort of big picture, kind of standing back from the forest. So let's go ahead and zoom this bottom one in. You can see now seconds are represented much quicker. And the top one is gonna give us a view of the entire project. So you can see now they're moving at different speeds. Uh, this one will give us a bit more control and a bit better of an editing experience. So let's go ahead and bring this timeline back to the beginning. There's a couple other things that we can do to make this uh, you know, a little bit more intuitive for audio editing. We can change our audio track name. So we'll make this dialogue. You can also change the little icon here. You can make it whatever you want. We'll stick with the microphone for now. All right, so everything here is ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and record a little snippet of audio for my big voiceover job that I have coming up. Let's go ahead and record something.
Using GarageBand to record voiceover is super easy. I wasn't happy with that, let's do one more. Using GarageBand for voiceover is super easy. Having this one down here that's zoomed in, it's giving us a bit more information. You can see these edits a little bit clearer. We can even zoom in a little further. So you can go back here and I can, is super easy. I can play them back. I wasn't happy with that. Let's do one more. And let's say I want to keep the, it's super easy from the second take. So what I can do is jump in here is super is that's my gap right there. Super right before super easy. I'm going to go and press command T on this. It's going to put a break there. Let's find the next S here. Using GarageBand for voiceover is super. Oh, this is going to be a tough edit actually, because I didn't, I didn't, uh, do them the same. So now I can see up here, I can delete this part in the middle. I can pull this one back. And now let's see what we have. Using GarageBand to record voiceover is, is super. Okay, so I have an is and I have an is there. So what I'm gonna do is grab this section here and we're gonna drop it right over top so those is those ises are over top of each other. That's a weird one to say, ises. And I'll stretch this out so that there's pretty seamless. Let's take a listen to this. Using GarageBand to record voiceover is super easy. There we go. Now I have the first half of the first part and the second half of the second part edited just like that. Now I'll go ahead and clean this up so that there's no you know, fluff at the, sort of the beginning and the end because we wanna send the client a polished recording. I'm gonna go right up to about there. I don't wanna clip my word too much. And we'll go at the end and bring that back to right about there. Now you can get fancy and put in a crossfade in between here, but if you take a listen, you may not need it. So using GarageBand to record voiceover is super easy. Sounds pretty good to me. I wouldn't really notice any edits there. Of course, you can get more creative with this. And that's basically it. Now, of course, you can add any effects that you want to this, any EQ, any compression. That's gonna be a different tutorial. We really just wanted to show you how to set up GarageBand for voiceover. Now, if you guys have any questions, if I've missed anything, or if anything wasn't as clear as mud, let me know down in the comments below. I personally moderate all the comments that come through our YouTube, so I'm more than happy to uh, elaborate on any topics or give you guys some additional information. As always, I hope that this was helpful for you. Happy auditioning, and we'll see you in the next one.